Ever since I discovered Omen 30, I've enjoyed kit bashing and scratch building both locomotives and rolling stock. I've used a few HA scale mechanisms as the basis for Omen 30 locomotives in my fleet. In fact, over half of my current locomotives have been built this way. My earlier ones were kits, which were designed to go on top of specific HA scale mechanisms. Later on, after a few failed attempts, I'd learned enough to build some locomotives completely from styrene. For some of these, I used ON30 cabs left over from other conversion projects. When I ran out of those, I either built my own from styrene, or had them 3D printed via Shapeways. This experimentation with 3D printing culminated in the construction of my only diesel locomotive, which is almost entirely 3D printed. I've just completed my latest build, Bradford Valley Lumber Cone No. 5. In this video, I'll talk you through how I built it, the decisions made on the way, and some of the mistakes I made. It will be a bit of a slideshow, as I was originally planning to do this as a written blog post. I was lucky to find a Barkman HO scale 460 for a reasonable price on eBay. However, I soon ran into my first problem. Out of the box, the HO scale locomotive just barely fit onto my 9 inch long turntable. Given that I would need to lengthen both the locomotive and the tender for ON30, this ruled out the possibility of making a tender engine. Before I started construction, I needed to test the locomotive, so I temporarily wired up a non-sound decoder using the connections from the tender. With this in place, I ran the locomotive around the layout. It ran well and didn't stall on any of the tighter curves. Now, the question was what to do with it. Given the length issue, my only real option was to make it into a tank engine. I wasn't able to find any records of American narrow gauge tank engines which had a 4-6 anything wheel arrangement. However, I've always felt as though ON30 has an element of whimsy in it. So I went on the internet and I found this. This is Canadian National No. 47, which was originally built for the Grand Trunk Western Railroad. I liked this design and decided to use it as the inspiration for this build. I started construction by taking the lead truck and attaching it to the mounting post for the rear drawbar. This gave me the length I needed for the rear part of the footplate and the cab floor. Next, I used some 1.5mm styrene sheet to make the footplate, along with some styrene strip to connect the two parts together. After positioning it, I drilled out the styrene above the holes for the original mounting screws, and used two 2x6mm screws to hold it in place. With the footplate sorted out, I made the boiler from PVC pipe, some styrene strip and body putty was used to make the firebox. I had a spare ON30 drawbar handy, which was exactly the right length to mount the rear truck. The rear truck itself is a roundhouse 100 ton truck with built in power pickups, which I'd bought for a previous project and hadn't ended up using. At this point, I decided that the cab and tank would be 3D printed, mainly so I could get the curves where the top of the tank met the sides. Like with my other 3D printed parts, these would be designed in Blender and printed by Shapeways. My first step was to replicate part of what I'd already built in Blender so that I could work around it. In this case, the red is what's already been built and the green parts are the electronic components, a TSU 2200 decoder, a speaker and a current keeper module. With those in place, I designed the cab and some other parts. I'd already made the pilots and smoke box door for my consolidation kit bash. The smokestack and headlights were also from 3D printed projects. I just copied them in and modified them to fit the boiler. With that done, I started designing the new components. First up was the firebox to cover the motor at the front of the cab. Next were the walls of the cab. Now, my first attempt at 3D printing a cab did not turn out well. I tried to make it with 1.5mm thick walls, which when printed vertically, came out flat and very flexible. However, when I tried doing this same cab as a flat pack, with each wall printed separately, they came out perfectly. So ever since then, that's the approach I've taken. I designed the side walls for this particular build as one piece, running all the way to the rear of the water tank, in order to prevent any seams from showing on the sides. The front cab wall was designed to fit over the boiler and firebox I'd already built, and the rear wall stopped about a centimetre or so below the top of the tank. This was to allow space for the electronics. The top of the tank is a separate piece again, with tabs to line it up with the side and rear walls. It also has an inset to hold the fuel bunker. I did print the fuel bunker as one piece. Given that it was a bit smaller than a cab, I thought that it may print out properly. This was a bit of an experiment on my part. 
With all those pieces done, I exported them and uploaded them to Shapeways. After receiving the parts, I cleaned them and checked that they had turned out. They had all turned out correctly. With that established, I was able to continue construction. I started by preparing the smoke box door. When I'd originally made it for my consolidation, I'd forgotten to put the hinges on. I'd made sure to include them this time, and I'd left two holes for a short length of 0.8mm copper wire. With that done, I assembled the cab. The handrails were made from 0.8mm copper wire, and the handle on the water hatch from 0.5mm copper wire. I also added brass door handles, which were O-scale castings from Precision Scale Co. All of these details had pilot holes printed into the relevant walls to guide the drill bits. After installing the rear pilot, I went to install the 3D printed firebox. This was where I ran into a problem. As it turned out, I'd made the boiler 2mm too short when I'd replicated the model in Blender. The diameter was correct, I just made it 2mm too low. To correct this, I used some 2mm square Starian strip to raise the firebox. However, this problem affected the cab too, as it forced it to sit 2mm above the footplate. To solve this, I measured where the front cab wall needed to go, and cut a slot in the boiler. With that sorted, I added the boiler detailing. The domes and generator were parts I'd bought from the Shapeways shop, and I sanded them down to match the diameter of the boiler. I also added the boiler bands using 05 by one5 mm Starian strip, and added some other details. I'd like to draw your attention to the headlight for a moment. In this photo, it's missing its top half. I first designed these when I was doing my diesel locomotive in order to have them sit on its roof. Both the base and the top are designed to fit around a 3mm LED. After the two parts of the headlight are painted, the LED is sandwiched between them, then wired up. Going back to my build, I made the pilot deck from 1.5mm styrene and glued the front pilot onto it. When I test fit it, I realised that the overhang on the front was much too long. One cut of a hobby knife later, the pilot deck had been shortened to the same length as the original HO scale deck. With this in place, it meant that the two pads that hold the pilot deck were now right next to where the coupler needed to be mounted. A KD coupler box would not fit into this, so I just used part of one to make a coupler mount. With all of that sorted, I test fit all the components together. There were three separate sub-assemblies, the cab, the footplate with boiler, and the pilot deck. After painting and lettering the model, I installed the electronics. There wasn't space for the current keeper in the tank at the rear, but I was able to fit it into the boiler. I used some styrene strip to create a baffle around the speaker. I then painted it black, so it wouldn't be noticeable through the windows. Wires from the headlight and keep live were run through holes drilled into the firebox. The power and motor wires were run through the gap in the chassis, which was left from the removal of the original tender plugs. The decoder was installed widthwise at the back of the tank, which left the rest of the space in that area free to accommodate the wires. Once the decoder was wired up, I painted the wires black and installed the cab on the body. I tested it on my programming track, and it worked. I then tested it on my layout, and at that point it didn't work so well. The first problem with my design was that I was relying on the weight of the rear truck alone to hold it on the tracks. This didn't work, as the truck had been designed for use under a tender or freight car. In order to resolve this, I made two additions. The first was to make a spring to put downward pressure on the arm holding the rear truck. I used one of the axle wipers from the HO scale 460 tender to make the spring, and glued it in place after cutting it to shape. The second addition was two extra styrene strips to give the spring something to push against. These ensured that the rear truck stayed on the rails. However, there was one other thing I'd overlooked. For the rear coupler, I had installed a standard KD coupler box. When I tested the locomotive on the tightest curve of my layout, it derailed shortly after entering the curve. Yet, the original 460 had gone around this 18 inch radius curve without any issues. I realised that the problem was the rear coupler box. The front of it had already been shortened to allow me to install it a bit further back. This was to allow the rear coupler additional swing to compensate for the overhang at the rear. As it turned out, the front of the coupler box was fouling the rear truck on tight curves. After trimming that end of it, the loco ran without any problems. With that sorted out, I performed some additional test runs. I coupled up my firefighting car, which is the shortest freight car on my layout, and sent it around that tightest curve. <laughs>
After that, I performed this test with one of my longest cars, a Bachmann ON30 passenger car. In both cases, the overhang at the rear of the locomotive did not derail the coupled freight car. With that confirmed, number 5 was ready to go into service. If you have any questions, or would like to know more, please ask in the comments below. Here's a few shots of it in action. <laughs>